Oh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott Mance. Welcome to today's special SAG After Foundation screening of film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool. What did you think of the movie? <laughs> well, please welcome the director of film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool, Paul McGuigan. Please welcome the author of the book on which this film was based, Peter Turner. <laughs> Playing Peter Turner in this film, please welcome Jamie Bell. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the lovely and talented Annette Benning. You know, th this is a film, <laughs> when, I, when I saw it at Telluride, I just was so, uh, just so deeply moved at how two people from different worlds could be so drawn to each other so instantly. And, and like, why do you think that Gloria and Peter, I know, don't answer this. <laughs> don't, don't answer this, Peter. <laughs> Not for you. Uh, uh, for, for Paul and for, for Jamie and Fernet. Like, why do you think these people were, were drawn to each other uh, just so unexpectedly, I think is a, a good word for it. Paul. Oh, me. Hi, everyone. Um, the subtitles are available. Um, <laughs> why do I think they were drawn together? Well, it, it, it kind of is a peer question. So um, it's obviously peers dashingly good looks. And, um, <laughs> you know, it was interesting though. I can, only, I can only tell you my experience of when I first heard the words being said by these two brilliant actors it was around at um, Barbara Broccoli's house and a uh, Jamie came along to to read with Annette and it suddenly dawned on me. I had never really heard the Liverpool the Scouse accent with this Hollywood droll and it was really interesting and it was a, it was this kind of harmony that I felt was really interesting and, and something unique and so that was the beginning of the journey for me was there was a uniqueness to this relationship that then transpires, you, you, you get into it a lot deeper, but I'll let Peter talk about what the, why the relationship existed, I guess. Um. And that's for you, Peter. <laughs> okay, hi. I think that uh, the very kind of differences that they had was something that kept them together. That there's one thing, the age difference, then the cultural difference, and then the kind of like, the, uh, the status difference, being Gloria. Uh, was uh, an Oscar-winning uh, Hollywood actress, had been a big star, and uh, you know I was just like a jobbing working actor. Uh, but within all that, we we just found um, that you know we had an awful lot that connected, and I think that that's what it was. It was a connection. Uh, you know, E.M. Forster said it didn't only connect the prose and the passion in life, and all will be revealed. And um, and it was certainly a connection of that magnitude, I think. Well, you know, Annette, uh, you actually spoke with producer Barbara Broccoli. Barbara Broccoli, who, you know, maybe you know from another very popular film series. You're all laughing, so you know what I'm talking about. James Bond. Uh, but Annette, you had conversations with Barbara quite some time ago about playing Gloria. Right, we, uh, Barbara and I were friends. Uh, it w wasn't too much, what, what year did you write the book? What year, year did it come out? Okay, it came out 1986. Okay, but right, yeah, so, we, so in the 90s, yeah. Barbara and I were having babies and we were friends <laughs> and we met through a mutual friend. So we were just, you know, getting to know each other. And she, at that point, was, thinking about making the movie. So we talked about it at that point, uh, but it wasn't the right time and it wasn't the right iteration of the movie. So we, but we did talk about it as that long time ago. So it's been sort of percolating all these years. That percolation, how did that percolation actually sort of enhance your commitment and performance ultimately? Well, I, I hope in a good way. I mean, 
think it was a good way, right? <laughs> no, what I mean is, you know, if, if any of you have ever worked on something and then put it down and gone away and then come back to it, uh, if you've ever done a play more than once or if you've ever had the opportunity to work on something a lot and then it just sort of leaves and it leaves your conscious mind and then you come back to it, I think there is a sort of um, unconscious sort of de hopefully deepening that happens. But I had, but the book itself is really what's so beautiful. And the book, for those of you who are interested, it's a great read. It's a very slender, kind of tasteful book. And that's it. And when you read the book, it immediately, you can see how it would be cinematic. So the book has always been there too, and I've had the book all the years, all these years, and referred back to it. And so, I think it really helps when you have a kind of piece of source material like that, that is so concrete and full of abstract. You know, just he, 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 Peter, who's right <laughs> here, uh, is able to capture something about the connection that he's talking about. So it was really a privilege to get to do it. I'm so glad I got to with these gentlemen. Well, you know, you're you're going off of you know, Gloria didn't do a lot of interviews uh, during her time, but you know, Jamie, you're playing this guy. I mean, he's like right here. <laughs> this is the real Peter Turner. <laughs> Very difficult to tell who's who, I know. Wait, wait, Peter, when you found out Jamie Bell was playing you, were you like, yes! Uh, but tell me about, about Jamie, about playing, about playing Peter and like all the conversations you had to, you know, I mean, was a little more pressure, a little more responsibility, like playing someone who wrote the book and is like collaborating with the filmmakers on, on the film itself. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of questions. Now you mention it. Um, no, uh, Peter is, is, it's very difficult to talk about him when he's here, honestly, when he's right next Go to me. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, um, uh, he was, I think, for all of us, um, just an invaluable source, obviously. He was the, the guy that lived through all this and has all these memories and wrote that beautiful book that Annette mentioned. Um, he's just so generous with his time. Um, you know, he's he's a, a writer. He's also an, an actor in his own right as well. And I think when he, especially my experience, when I, whenever I'd ask him questions, um, his kind of recounting of these experiences would, I mean, exhaust you. I think to to I think he he lives it every time he goes there. I can't imagine watching the film now that it's done. How you know what that roller coaster must be like for you, but. Um, the um, the most amazing thing he did for us, I think, the, the most gracious thing you can do, I think, in that position is to step back, actually, and and, and allow authorship over your story to to the three of us. Um, and he, he did that beautifully um, and without hesitation. Um, and he was lovely to have around. I mean, I think whenever I when I met him for the first time, I absolutely just fell in love with him. He's a man who is so open-hearted and so decent and comes from such good stock. I don't know if anyone knows anything about what Liverpool means or what it represents to the people who are from there, but it's a very strong sense of identity. And they they are people who stick together through thick and thin. And I think um, Peter is the embodiment of all those things, really. Well, I want to take a, a question here from the sag After Foundation audience. This first one is from Chris. Hopefully there's just one Chris here. That's you. Okay, so this question is for Annette. The question is, is after researching this film, how much did you bring of the real person and how much of the performance did you bring from yourself? That's a very fair question and a good question and I think the true answer is I don't probably really know on an intellectual level. I watched her movies, which is a, such a joy and a pleasure. Uh, you know, she was a great femme fatale of the film noir period, and she made some great movies, and she made some not so great movies, but the not so great ones are also fun to watch. Uh, and she was really a formidable actress. Uh, so how much fun to have that as my research, right? So that's one part of it, though of course this is a different part of her life. Because after she had done so well, she really struggled with finding uh, work. 
Uh, and she did. She, she did television. She did horror movies. She did bits and pieces of like a television movie here or there, which I watched, which was also part of it. And that was a pleasure. But there aren't that many interviews. In fact, I just saw that she had been on the Mike Douglas show. For those of you who remember the Mike like, Douglas show, I loved the Mike Douglas show. <laughs> I, when I was a kid, I loved it. I remember he would sing and then he would like give a nice interview. But <laughs> I, I couldn't find this online. Sometimes, of course, on YouTube, you know, you can just open it up and find all kinds of stuff, but not on Gloria. She was very private. Yeah. Uh, Peter, I haven't even had a chance to tell you. So I got to talk to an actress named Terry Moore, who is a fabulous woman, and she's now 89, and she was nominated for an Academy Award the same time as Gloria. She was there at that award ceremony where Gloria came down and said, thank you very much, and walked off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she said, they, they'd made a film together. They had made a film called Man on a High Wire. Tightrope, sorry, High Wire. Mm, I've said that wrong a number of times. <laughs> Man on a Tightrope, it's a Kazan movie. And she just adored Gloria. Said she was very private. She said she was very private because once I started doing the math and thinking, oh, okay, well, Terry Moore, so you would have known her at this time because the movie that you made with her in Kazan in Germany would have been... I said, well, what did, did she say, if you don't mind me asking? Did she say anything about Nick Kazan or her children? She said, no. She was very private. So I had to... I, I basically, I think what I went from, as I found as much as I could, and then it's Peter's version of Gloria. And the movie really, and the book is his point of view. So does well, that help? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, tell us about your trip after you, you production got underway or it was about to get underway. And you're, you know, doing all, you're all doing your research. You went to, you took a trip to Liverpool, I understand. Yeah, we went to Liverpool, um, Annette, myself and Barbara and Peter. And um, we knocked on the door of Peter's house unannounced <laughs> and this lovely girl answered and she let us in the house as you would four strangers um, one of them <laughs> one of them is obviously Annette Benning and she was a bit flabbergasted but it, it was lovely to go there and, and I think Annette really wanted to get a, a flavour of, of Liverpool and the streets and and so that was really fantastic, and um, we did quite a lot. And then we had a lot of re rehearsal time as well. We had like three weeks rehearsal, which is quite unusual, as you probably all know. Um, and so that was three weeks of getting bombarded with questions from these two brilliant actors. And, and then uh, Peter was a big part of that rehearsal process because you know it was important that Annette and Jamie and all the other actors could ask the questions that they wanted to ask. So it felt like we were prepared going into it. It felt, okay, you know, and we worked a bit on the script as well, because obviously, for me, I, I love the actors to come in and, and, and question scripts and to question the reasons why this certain scenes are there. And, and so that was a brilliant process for, for me also, you know, it was very in, in, invaluable in a lot of ways. And, and also to have Peter involved and have, have the other actors there as well, you know, Julie Walters and, and Stephen, Graham, you know, we'd just sit around and we just talk about the stories. We weren't really, we weren't really rehearsing the text as such. We were just asking a lot of questions to, to, to with, with, within each other. You know, asking each other questions like, "What, what do you think you want to do here?" And 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 the, and the script changed quite a bit. It changed enough for it to to suddenly click into place because of um, the input of of these brilliant actors and with, with Peter. This next question is for Sue Ellen. Sue Ellen, right in the front row. That is commitment. Okay, your question is for both Jamie and Annette. Your relationship in the film is so beautiful and heartbreaking. Did you have a rehearsal pro process uh, or, or what you did to create, to, how did you create that heartwarming connection between you two? Like how did you, was the chemistry sort of instantaneous, or did you sort of have to evolve it? <laughs> Silence. Good question. 
that's hard. You know, I think that it's very kind of you to say that. First of all, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, I think it's one of those things that you, can, you can't quantify in language, really. I mean, I can, uh, it, it, it would be more, it would be easier if Jamie wasn't here, quite frankly, for me to answer that. <laughs> because, <laughs> because, you know, he was very generous to me. That's how I f experienced it, was that he was generous to me just also as a person. You know, it's like in acting class, you learn that, right? You learn that it's, that the exchange you're having with the other person is between you and the other person, not just the imaginative relationship. So the question of chemistry is, is not something that anybody can really discuss. Um, because there are, I'm, I know there are many times that people don't get along at all and the chemistry on screen is very good. You can't tell. And other times people get on very well and it doesn't look like... So exactly what that is, I don't think anybody knows, in my experience. And I've, de <laughs> I've definitely, like, I, <laughs> I'm thinking about something. <laughs> I was thinking about something that I was taught in acting school. Okay, so you're playing a love scene, right? And you're not attracted to the other person. In fact, sometimes the opposite happens. As many of you, I'm sure, know that you have not that feeling about that person at all. Well, you have to figure it out. And luckily, I didn't have that problem with Jamie, but I have been in that position. And I remember the acting teacher literally saying, okay, you take the head of the person that's there, you remove it, and you put the head of the person that you're thinking of that makes you feel the way that you know you need to feel for that person, and you do it. Because what are you going to do? What is your alternative? to resent the person for not making you. That's not gonna work for your performance. Oh, so I was just thinking about that, like change the head. <laughs> I don't know if, they, I, mean, I think he did actually say that. It was not bad advice. That's great <laughs> anyway, advice. Anyway. Um, I didn't change your head. <laughs> Yeah, um, great question, Sue Ellen, <laughs> and great answer, both of you. Um, uh, <laughs> so yeah, replace the head. Uh, that actually answers another question I have coming down the line. <laughs> um, but before I get to that, Peter, when filming got underway and you saw Jamie and Annette yeah. sort of bringing your book to life and, and, I don't know, maybe reliving those moments, what was that like for you? It was interesting, it was, uh, it was strange, really. Um, at one point, I remember I went to Pinewood one day and, and uh, I didn't feel so good and I wasn't quite sure about things. I, for some reason, I walked onto the set and somebody was, uh, one of the crew, or somebody said, who's that person? And somebody said, that's the real Peter Turner. And she said, but I thought he was dead. <laughs> So oh, no. I kind of walked on, and, and then suddenly, <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly, I kind of felt kind of strange about the whole thing, and, um, and I thought, oh, you know, why did I sign for this? Sorry, I signed, and uh, and I literally did have a uh, it's a wonderful life moment. Uh, you know the film, and George goes up to heaven, and his life seems dull, and he looks down at everything, and he sees everybody there, and then suddenly he kind of realizes how fortunate he is, and lucky he is, and how wonderful it is to be alive. And I looked around the studio, and over there was the kitchen and the house where my mum would have been cooking the breakfast. And over there was Annette and Jamie, working so intently, and Paul was very carefully directing everything. And I really did have the It's a Wonderful Life moment, and I just thought, this is just incredible, and how lucky I am. And, uh, and that's how I felt, really. And from then on, it was just an absolute 
absolute joy uh, to uh, you know to to be a part of it and and such a privilege um, and especially with Annette Benning and Jamie Bell and Paul McGuigan it was just a wonderful experience for me. Jamie, I want to, I want to say that this is a, a special movie in, in other ways for you. It brings you back with Julie Walters, mm -hmm. who you made Billy Elliot with 17 yeah. years yeah. ago. Hey. So how was that? Yeah, it was great, man. I mean, you know, I'm fortunately a couple of inches taller than her now, which is good. It's a good start. Um, Julie's amazing. I didn't realize when I was a kid, because I was a kid, uh, just how, how people love, how much they love Julie Walters, especially, I mean, they love her here, but in England, it's like people consider her a relative in some way. It's like she's like an auntie or she's like a grandparent. They just can't wait to see her. Uh, Stephen Graham, who's in this movie, plays my brother. He's mostly known for playing um, very kind of dangerous, criminal, kind of tough guy type roles, uh, was kind of literally reduced to like a nervous schoolboy the day that he met Julie Walters, <laughs> honestly. But she's amazing, and she's the, I can't imagine anyone, I mean, also for you, because it's your mother, but this woman was such a matriarch of this family. She was like just everything, the rock at the very center of this very large family. Peter, you're one of eight. Nine. Sorry, nine, nine. one of nine, which oh obviously. God, I've been saying eight. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that aren't depicted in the film, obviously. Um, but she, what an extraordinary woman she must have been. And then to have someone like Julie play it, I can't imagine finding someone more suited to the role than Julie, yeah. Yeah, and that, uh, in terms of Gloria Graham, you, you actually knew a lot about her before filming even started. I understand that she even, her, her films, some of her films inspired some of your movies going back to like maybe the early 1990s. When I made the Griff, a movie called The Grifters, Stephen Frears had, thank you. Thanks. Yes. Stephen Frears uh, suggested that I watch Gloria Graham as an inspiration for Myra. Uh, so I did. That was really helpful. That was a wonderful tip that, that he gave me. So I watched a lot of her films. And The Grifters, he wanted to make it a sort of modern noir. So. I did have that, and uh, the facts of her life um, I could find. Uh, when she was married four times, she had four children. When her films were in relation to her life, who she worked with, but a lot of I don't. Tr there are some anecdotes floating around as well that I don't really trust. I tried to check with Peter as much as I could about basic stuff that was factual, but a lot of her, quite frankly, is a mystery. Peter knew her, he was there, but I have only questions, really. I have a million questions. And her son, Tim, who is the son that appears in the film, came to our screening when we screened in London about a month ago, and he liked it very much. We wanted to respect his privacy as well as any of the family that's around. I still feel that way, I want to respect their privacy. <clears throat> At the same time, I'd like to know everything. <laughs> uh, so I know what that feels like. Um, but no, he, that meant a lot to me, that he liked mm -hmm. the movie and that he, he respected it and it felt right to him. And I met him that night, literally at this screening. So we were at this very loud party afterwards and it's all I wanted to do was go in the corner with Tim and ask him five million questions about his mother. It wasn't the time or the place. Maybe I'll get a chance at some point, but that meant a lot. Was there was there ever a, a maybe a ch chance where you wanted to go back and maybe like have some of her higher moments just to flash back to? Um, no, I mean we always worked on the three-year timeline. You know, it's funny because when I first showed the film to a friend of mine and she she mentioned that she said, "Oh, I'd like to know more," and I said, "Well, get your phone out and Google and." go and watch some of these these great films that she's made. Because to me, and to us all, this isn't the Gloria Graham bi biography. This is the love story that Peter told. And it's very important. Now, there was a scene in the films when, the, um, when, the, when they were both watching a, some, some of Gloria's films. That was a bigger, that was a bigger scene mm -hmm. where she was getting interviewed, like we are uh, up here with you guys. You know, like they were asking about her life, and Peter was in the audience listening to it. 
and just what you said, it, it kind of took away from their love story a little bit. Mm -hmm. It felt like we were trying to do a summary of her career very qu in a quick way, you know, so it, it felt like you were really, did the opposite in a way. So we were very careful in the, in, in, in the edit suite to keep it mm -hmm. very much focused on them. We, we, we did have a few other scenes where it went away from them and, and, and it didn't feel right, you know, so um, that's a great observation because we, we feel that, you know, and, and, and what's interesting is when Peter is in the pub, for instance, and the barman says, is that Gloria Graham? You know, she won an, an Oscar. And he's like, what? And that, th these are the days before the internet. So I kind of loved that way that he was, he was getting to know her as the audience are getting to know her a little bit. Mm -hmm. So the audience mm -hmm. don't have mm -hmm. as, no, so the, the audience aren't in, in front of their, of, of their protagonist, you know, mm -hmm. the, the main character. So I thought that was really in, interesting. And, and you know, and, and my job, or our job was to hope that people will go away and Google her and go and watch her films because they're amazing pieces of work and, and, and I think that's the job that the, the both of these amazing actors have done and who Peter's story is portrayed. Okay, I gotta ask, Jamie, mm. what made you want to become an actor? Pinocchio. <coughs> <laughs> There's a song in it where he's, they say uh, the, an actor's life for me and I just like the song very much. Um, yeah. That's that, honest, <laughs> that, that's basically it. I mean, I was dancing from when I was six. I started dancing when I was six and stuff, and and uh, there, there was always uh, different, very you know, tap dancing, and then like you do ballet dancing and stuff. But there was this other dance called character, and that was kind of other than tap dancing, which was my favorite. Character was my second favorite, and you'd have to portray a character through through dance. So I played a frog, and I played a scarecrow, <laughs> um, Whistle Gummidge, or something like that. Um, and I would love that. Can you that. do that for us? I can do a little bit of frog now if you want. <laughs> do a bit of frog, bit of frog. No, 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 Jeez. I think this is going on the internet somewhere, so. Please, be civilized, be civilized. Um, do a bit of sing a lot. Yeah, you guys uh, are good, great dancers. I mean, only if Annette does it. I don't want to put anyone else on the spot. But um, uh, just quickly, quickly, they're becoming vicious, these people. Um, uh, unbelievable. Actors, get them all together. All goes to hell. Um, but no, I don't, I don't really know. That song, and coupled with all my experiences of through dance and stuff, and then when I made my first film, Billy Elliot, just the, the, the family that you get when you make a film, you, you know what I'm talking about. You turn up on a set and you all work so hard at the pump together for that, just that little amount of time. You get to know each other so well. And I love that element of it, that traveling circus thing, and creating the alchemy of, we've got this idea which is on these pages that came out of this brain in 86, the year I was born, by the way, and like, you know, and, th and then we're all gonna go and try and do this together. <laughs> so that wasn't meant to be a dig, I was just letting you know. Um, uh, but you know, that element of it, I'm just um, in love with still, you know, ever since my first movie, so that's why. Annette. What made you want to become an actress? This morning I did a reading of a play. A, a friend of mine that I met in college, we were theater majors together at San Francisco State, and uh, she's a playwright. So, so we did the reading this morning, but yesterday we sat down to rehearse. So we had one rehearsal for this reading. And um, as we started to read the play, I just had that same feeling I always have. Just this like, like, like I kind of want to cry a little bit. Because I know that sounds so corny, <laughs> but it's true, no, but I really felt, uh, felt that like, oh, it's just so exciting. Um, so I just started doing plays in high, in, you know, I went to the theater, I saw my first play at, San Die at the Old Globe Theater in San Diego because my English teacher took me. And then I started doing plays in high school and then in junior college and then stayed and then conservatory. So I just sort of plotted my way along doing plays and it was that what you just said about family and that sense of doing something together and, um, and the literature. Once I got a little bit older and I got really into, um, w once I got into college and studying the great li dramatic literature, I have to say I loved that. I loved the combination of this emotion with this great uh, intellectual heft to the great uh, plays. So that's kind of what got me interested was that. 
You're stuck on a deserted island. Don't say Pinocchio. You're stuck on a deserted island. You can only have one film. What's it going to be? Good question. <laughs> Singing in the rain. Yes! Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That is a good one. All right, it's all on you, man. E.T. E.T. All right, that's a great one. That's a great one. Uh, like, what, as when you were you know, doing, growing up, and uh, you're, you studied literature, you're doing plays and dancing, but when you're watching a film in your, or in your formative years, you saw a film, you saw a performance. Like, what was the first time you saw a performance on the big screen that made you go, wow? a lot of movies when I was a kid. I'm not, wasn't very literate, but I did see The Sound of Music. So for sure, Julie Andrews on the hill, like spinning around and the helicopter shot. And uh, when I got to meet her, I was definitely, oh my God, that's Julie Andrews. <laughs> uh, that was one of them. When I got a little bit older, I would say Liv Ullman in persona. But when I was a kid, definitely Sound of Music. Jamie. Yeah, there's a couple. Christian Bale, Empire of the Sun, was massive for me as a kid, because uh, I was a kid and he was a kid and he was amazing. He still <laughs> is amazing. Uh, uh, but then weirdly, Michael Keaton and Beetlejuice. If, as a kid, I was just I just <laughs> couldn't believe he's in the film for like 15 minutes and you just can't get enough of the guy. It's <laughs> unbelievable. And then uh, James Dean Rebel that cause was as a, as a young actor, yeah, I was right. like, I just want to do the yeah, act. I just want to be like that guy. He's so cool, you know. Well. Well, before we part, like, what's the best advice, the best acting advice you ever got? Who gave it to you? Except for the head, Don't, you know. <laughs> the head's pretty good. That's great advice. <laughs> best advice. Uh, weirdly, it came from uh, Julie Walters. It was actually a line of dialogue in, in Billy Elliot. It, it, there's a weird little scene where the, the kid, the kid, Billy doesn't have a mom, so there's this letter that she wrote him, and she reads it to him, and it's a very sweet, tender moment. But in in the letter, uh, I can't remember if it's to his mother. I can't, anyway, and she says, always be yourself. And it, it just has always rung true for me, very, you know, to, to be uniquely you. Because no one else is you. And, and you'll be you better than anybody else. So if you can stick to that gun and not change, and you know, then maybe you'll, you know, that, will, that wins the day, I think, your unique self. Also loyalty, can I have two? Yeah, yeah, I've had the same manager and the same agent for 17 years. Um, my manager has essentially raised me. She's my, my second mother. She was the one who gave me a film education. She was the one who said, you need to watch these films by these people, study this actor, that actress. She's got great taste in movies, and I've been with her my whole life. I consider my second mom, really. And, and, and to have people like that, especially at a young age, when you start so young like I did, just they're everything. Because they love you, and they believe in you before anything else, and without that, I'd be ruined, I would say. Annette, parting words of wisdom for this wonderful SAG after a foundation crowd. Sure. <laughs> Jamie's answer was so good. I don't know if I can. I don't even know what to say, like the one thing. Um, Go back to the head if you want. <laughs> can I d that's not the. Oh, I was so lucky. I had so many good teachers and mentors. Um, I guess one thing that just popped into my head, it's not the best necessarily, but continue to ask questions. That's the best, I, I, you know, and, and the curiosity um, is so important and just the, uh, the hunger to do it. It has to be irrational to a degree. It's not rational. I don't think any creative person, it's not a rational thing. It's a deeper than that. And you don't necessarily have to have the answers you just want to ask the questions. I think a lot of acting is that. And that goes back to then trusting your instinct. You know, you're using your conscious mind to go to the unconscious. That's what Stanislavski said. So then that goes back to then trusting yourself. Once you fill yourself up with your conscious mind, then you have to learn to let go and allow your instinct to be free if you're in good hands and you feel safe with everybody you're with, 
that helps a lot. But sometimes you're not, and you have to do it anyway. So um, how's that? That's pretty good. <laughs> Great. That's good. Paul, Peter, Jamie, Annette, thank you so much for joining thank us today. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Foundation screening thank of you. Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>